You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. Warning, vulgarity awaits. I'm back, bitches. Today, we are going to embark on a journey. We are going over the shittiest of the shittiest fire elemental only guns and weapons from both Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel. But I've got to say, it's ironic that more guns on this list are from the pre-sequel. I mean, usually, all the really shitty guns are from Borderlands 2. Think about it for a second. You've got the Storm, the Evil Smasher, the Devastator, the fucking Wanderlust. How on earth did this happen? You know what? Before we start, let's see if we can reach 40,000 likes on this video because memes. You know what? Fuck that number. I want 100,000 likes on this video. If we get 100,000 likes on this video, I will ship each of you your very own warp drive to put in your car. That way, you can go fast as fuck. But I digress. Top 8 Worst Fire Elemental Only Guns and Weapons from both Borderlands 2, the pre-sequel, Handsome Collection, whatever the hell it is, starting now. Number 8. The ZX-1. On the one hand, I feel kind of bad for bashing this particular laser. While the weapon skin is relatively lousy looking, the actual special effect on this weapon is pretty badass. The ability to aim at an enemy and then vaguely hip fire and have those same bullets home in on that enemy is fucking awesome. To be honest, I wish there were more guns like this in more video games out there. Maybe not multiplayer games so much, but it would be really good in single player FPS games. The problem is that this laser can't perform critical hits consistently unless you're using Nisha's tombstone skill. While you may be able to perform a critical hit on like the first shot or so, all homing shots aim for the enemy's center mass. This means you're missing out on a lot of potential damage that you would otherwise be getting with other blaster type lasers. Another problem is that the projectile path for the ZX-1 is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Bullets should vaguely curve towards targets, not travel in these haphazardly hitting random surface projectile paths. It's bullshit that half of the projectiles end up hitting the ground because of this stupid but awesome looking projectile path. Again, I want to make it clear that the concept for this gun is great, but some of the design elements like haphazard projectile path and the inability to crit make the ZX-1 a piece of shit. Even still, you can get one from Zarpadon or the Empyrean Sentinel. Number 7, the Firestarter. So maybe just like the ZX-1, the Firestarter is an ungodly awful. However, when compared to the other quest reward weapon that you can get from the exact same quest, why the fuck would you get the Firestarter? On the one hand, you can get the Torg Mata, which is a fairly decent Torg shotgun with an interesting flacking effect. On the other hand, the fire starter is limited because the weapon can only come in fire, not to mention that when you first receive the fire starter, most of the areas in the pre-sequel that you're going to be in are vacuums, limiting this weapon's viability for combat even further. This gun is acquired so early at level 3 that by the time you get to areas that will actually be viable, you've probably already got better fire weapons. Ultimately, just get the Torgmata, and if you somehow mess up and get this, sell this pile of fuck. Number 6, the Logan's Gun. So the Logan's Gun is a really shitty weapon. While I think it's definitely better in Borderlands the pre-sequel, the Borderlands 2 version starts to get really weak at higher levels. Unlike most guns where you actually point the gun and shoot it at somebody, you're supposed to shoot around people's feet with the Logan's Gun. Think about this for a second. If the whole idea is to be dealing damage in a relatively inaccurate way, why is the Logan's gun a Hyperion gun? Hyperion weapons are designed to be accurate. Why on earth would Hyperion make an accurate pistol design just to shoot projectiles at people's feet? What was Hyperion thinking? Is this a practice gun for tap dancing? Like, what the hell? Okay, fine, all criticism aside, the only real bonus to the Logan's gun is that you get free rocket ammo when it's combined with either the sham or another kind of absorption shield. So I guess it's not a total piece of shit. After all, rocket ammo in this game is rare as fuck, and we only get half the rockets that we got in Borderlands 1. 
So you gotta make that shit work. If you want one, go kill Wilhelm in Borderlands 2. Try the grinder in the pre-sequel. Number five, the Contraband Skyrocket Grenade. Could Bandit make the Contraband Skyrocket Grenade any more difficult to use? I know it's actually somewhat decent, assuming that you can get the explosion to hit something, but how the fuck am I supposed to get the explosions to hit anything when the goddamn grenade flies up into the air as soon as I throw it? This grenade isn't supposed to be a signal flare, it's supposed to be a grenade that I use to kill bandits, raiders, psychos, and nomads with. You notice a trend with all those enemies? They walk on the fucking ground. Stupid bandit manufacturing. Aside from being a ridiculous grenade mod, what is actually really cool about the Contraband Skyrock Grenade is its level scales with the player's level. So you could feasibly acquire this at like level 1 and use it until level 50 or so, which is actually pretty badass. But that's if you want to risk using something that's difficult to be accurate with and you risk blowing yourself up in the process. This is a pre-order bonus for Borderlands 2, but if you have the Game of the Year edition, you should get access to this grenade pretty easily. I believe it's also in the pre-sequel, but it was only part of a special event. Maybe it's a random world drop now. Number 4. The Party Line. So I think many of us can agree that the Contraband Skyrocker Grenade, despite its really cool level scaling abilities, is a piece of shit grenade mod. Well, how would you like it if TDOR designed a shotgun based off of the Contraband Skyrock Grenade. Wouldn't that be really cool? <laughs> no, unfortunately, enter the party line shotgun. This thing is a pain in the ass to reload. You start to try to deal reload damage with this thing and you realize that it acts just like the Contraband Skyrock Grenade. How on earth am I supposed to hit anyone with this piece of shit and deal the reload damage that I want to deal? What would have actually made this gun better is if it had level scale like the original Contraband Skyrocket Grenade does. While it certainly wouldn't have been like one of the best weapons in the pre-sequel, it would have been really useful once you started entering areas with atmosphere. Plus, I do like the semi-flacking effect, and it actually can be quite useful once an enemy's shields are stripped. You can get this grenade mod... <coughs> Sorry, you can get this shotgun upon completing the fourth round of the Holodome DLC for Borderlands the pre-sequel. Number three, the all painful. Good evening, Pandora. Well, I've never seen such a gumption boatload of chicken fried giblets, piece of shit. Now, I reckon that I've called this gun a rotary sucking load of shit fuck in the past, but I gotta say that tradition just ain't my thing, country twang. Excuse me, uh, I'm not sure what came over me just now. Oh yeah, this piece of shit gun. I guess it's cool that the old Painful is a laser assault rifle, which I mean, you've gotta admit, it's pretty badass. The problem is that it's a fucking spinny gun assault rifle. Flat off, why? It takes fucking forever to get a decent amount of fire rate out of this shit. Why does life have to be this way? This is the problem with the Shred of Fire, the Lead Storm, the Ice Scream, and all of the various spinny guns from both games. Why is it that I have to have wind-up time? Why can't I just get a gun like the Fusilod that fires fast as fuck and doesn't need to wind up before firing? And you know, yes, I know, the Fusilod is a piece of shit too, but the fire rate is good on it, and the immediacy of the fire rate is good. I'm not even sure why you would want this gun, but if you do, it's acquired from random loot sources in the pre-sequel, Prepare to be disappointed. Number two, the pyrophobia. What a boatload of ass! Along with the bunny rocket launcher from TDOR, the pyrophobia has to be one of the worst rocket launchers from Borderlands 2. This rocket launcher is just fucked for a couple of reasons. One, the pyrophobia is a rocket launcher with a bizarre projectile pattern that involves multiple explosions as it travels through the air. These explosions are largely determined by rocket speed. Two, the pyrophobia is a Malawan rocket launcher. Malawan launchers with Malawan parts typically have faster projectile speeds. Because of this, you're going to get less explosions and the excess explosions are less likely to hit enemies. Why couldn't the Pyrophobia have been a rocket launcher from either Bandit or Torg? 
or the, some other manufacturer with slow projectile or rocket speeds. Why does the pyrophobia have to have its special effect? I don't know, guys. I guess it's not the shittiest launcher in Borderlands 2, but it's still pretty bad. I guess if you want one, you can pick one up from Incinerator Clayton, but honestly, you don't want a pyrophobia. Get a Norfleet instead. Number one, the Supernova. You know how the flame of the Firehawk from Borderlands 2 is amazing, especially if you played as Krieg? Well, pray to God that you don't find a supernova shield. Not only do you not get multiple novas, but this particular shield is a glitchy mess. Due to an error with how the supernova spawns in the pre-sequel, the supernova can appear in both legendary and E-Tech rarity, and that's despite the fact that E-Tech weapons can't otherwise be found in Borderlands the pre-sequel. To make matters even worse, the central capacitor or the like lit portion can spawn as different colors and they affect the total shield capacity and Nova damage. Purple versions are equivalent with purple rarity, blue versions are to blue rarity, E-Tech green versions are to green rarity, and white versions are like the white rarity Nova shields. The only advantage that the Supernova has over the other Nova Shields in Borderlands the pre-sequel is improved Blast Radius. Not even damage. Let that sink in for a second. Don't even farm for this. I'm not going to even tell you where it is. Okay, fine, I'll tell you where it is. It's Bruce, and it's during the Another Pickle quest. Alright guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, and remember... 100,000 likes. We got to get 100,000 likes. We're not going to get our warp drive. You got to do it. Come on. Warp drive. It's badass. But again, guys, in all seriousness, like this video if you liked it. And as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.